<laughs> okay, so while he, while he does that, I just want to ask you all, um, how many of you like to entertain in your homes, invite people to your homes and entertain them? We got a few here. Isn't it wonderful? I wish I, I you know, I'm just going to extend my mic real quick here and just tell me what you enjoy about inviting people to your home. I enjoy the um, camaraderie, the conversations that goes on, the laughter and, and the fun times, just getting together. Great. Okay. All right, here, why don't you, and you'll help me with that. Um, okay, go ahead. I'm going to ask. I'm, we're going to ask. I'm going to ask somebody else. I'm going to ask somebody else. You got one more. Um, how does your, your guests feel when you invite them to your home to eat? How do they feel? Raise your hand if you can answer that for me. Somebody that can share it. Okay. I think they... Behind you. I think they always feel... Hold on. Okay, there we go. Yeah. On? Feel great. I think they feel grateful and feel honored to spend time with you. You know, you invite somebody into your home that's personal, and you're cooking for them. Yeah, you never refuse a free meal, right? <laughs> that's great. Okay, let's let's do the raffle, and I feel like I need to kind of like throw this one in here and shake it up really good. Okay. Number two five seven four three four. Two five seven four three four. Really? <laughs> Check your tickets. Maybe she left. Maybe. It was Connie. She was right in front of me. Yeah. Somebody pushed me too. Okay, we'll do another one. We'll draw another one. Two five seven four four nine. Okay, great. Now, before I give you a choice here, I want—I just want to share these two books. Are two books that we like to hand out at our supper club, and I'll tell you about our supper club in our church that we're doing right now. These are amazing books. This one, "Take Charge of Your Health," wonderful testimonies about people that um, did lifestyle changes and how they were able to reverse disease. Powerful testimonies in this book. And we like to give these out. And you turn, my husband is the one that's read this one. I haven't read it yet, but William, can you give us a little dip on this, on what this book is about? <laughs> okay, why don't you choose <laughs> which one you want, and he'll tell us a little bit about that one. They're both really good. Okay, please, yes, Jelena. By the way, Jelena is a new member of our conference. I want to give her a hand of applause. She just joined our conference. She's also working here at CAMP. And uh, she's excited to have joined um, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Jelena, what about this book? It talks about all the different ailments that people have, uh, or hopefully don't have, but high blood pressure, diabetes, osteoporosis. And it's great because it tells you things that you can do to prevent from ever getting them in the first place. Wonderful. Okay, great. So my husband ordered them. <laughs> He's the personal ministry director in our church, and he ordered this one. He said, this is an amazing book. We need to get this. And I said, all right, for sure. Okay, I have, I'm going to do another one, because I have um, two more that I can give. 257-453. 257 Okay, great. And which one do you want? I think the U-turn. She wants U-turn. U-turn? Okay, here you go. And we'll do one more. Two five seven four five six. Two five seven four five six. Was that the one that I called out before? Oh, okay, the little one. Okay, so let her pick which one she wants. <laughs> okay. 
So outreach meals is what we're going to be talking about um, for our home and our church events, right? So this is what I want to share with you as the importance of this because this is really major, you know, it really is a game changer when we're trying to do outreach, we're trying to minister to people, it's, you know, and I'll, I'm going to give it all away all at once, but I'm going to get into the presentation, <laughs> okay. So what are outreach meals and do they work? And you heard some testimonies from people that it's working for them, right? And those of you who have tried it, you know it works, okay. So an outreach meal is a special meal you prepare for the purpose of inviting someone you want to befriend. A special meal you prepare for the purpose of developing trust in a person, right? Because, you know, the person's coming into your home, you're becoming vulnerable, they're vulnerable as well, right? And so by inviting them to your home, you're going to develop trust on both parts, right? You're developing their, their trust, they're developing, you're developing their trust and they're developing, okay, yeah, <laughs> in that way. So both of you are developing trust in each other. A special meal you prepare to help someone with their health, right? That's another aspect. Sometimes we don't really think about that, but if somebody's struggling with diabetes or heart disease, you can say, well, you know what? I'd like to show you some meals that you can make that's going to help you, you know, to reverse your heart disease and um, diabetes. Would you, like, would you like to come to my home and, and try out some, some recipes? If a person is tired of the medication, which most of them are, okay, they're going to say yes. Most people are desperate. They don't know what to do. And they just continue taking their medications. They're doing what they're doing every single day with no change. And they're tired. And, they, they, and they've lost hope. They just feel they're going get, to keep getting sicker and sicker. So you have an opportunity to prepare some meals that's going to be trans life transforming. Um, it can be held in your home, in church, at a park. You can invite them to a picnic. Um, you can go to a friend's house, you know, get together with another friend and say, you know, I'd like to invite some people um, to eat, but my home right now is not in the most, you know, presentable um, way, and can we use your home? And I'm sure if you have another person in your church who wants to do outreach, you can partner up with them and you can do that. Okay, and, it's, and it works out really well, okay? So now you're teaming up, right? Total member involvement, and you're teaming up with someone in your church to do that. Um, you can also use your own church, okay? If, the, if your home is not presentable, and the person, you know, they don't, they don't wanna invite you to their home, you know, just, you could do it in your church. There's no reason why you couldn't do that, right? That's what the church is for, okay? And also at a church program, like um, the supper clubs, right? Where we have one, and then I think it's Berkeley Springs that has um, the other supper club. Am I wrong about that? It's Berkeley Springs, right? And it's working really well. We're on our third month doing it, and, it, and it's, it's slowly picking up, but we had a good turnout the first time, okay? And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment. So who likes to do outreach? Who likes to do outreach meals and what should be included in our out, outreach meals? Okay, so, um, you know, anybody that is involved in evangelism would like to do outreach meals, right? And um, let's see here. Okay. Um, outreach is, let's see here. I, I'm, I think I messed up a little bit here. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, let's go to the question of what should be included in outreach meals, okay? Because I think I answered that question already, the other one already. So fruits, vegetables, like a salad, cooked veggies, grain, preferably a whole grain, right? If you're helping someone who's trying to reverse disease, it doesn't always have to be. But if somebody, if you're trying to help somebody with their health, preferably whole grains, okay? Um, some type of protein dish, okay? Um, it can be a meat dish, it can be a lacto-vegetarian dish, it could be totally vegan, okay? Um, whatever you decide you want to do, that's what you can do, okay? If you're trying to minister to somebody and trying to help them with their health, then you may look at, you know, doing a totally vegan or vegetarian meal, okay? And I have done that. I, um, I'm totally vegan. I don't cook any meat in our home. And so when we invite people to come our, into our home, we do a total vegan. We don't say anything. We just present the meal to them. And we never had anybody say they didn't like it. They all say, this was really delicious. And there was no meat in this meal. 
I can't believe. And then they ask, you know, why, why did you make that transformation? You know, why did you do that? And it gives us an opportunity to witness to why we did it. We're not telling them that they need to do it, but we tell them what life transformation happened to us as a result of turning into a total plant-based diet. And I like to use the word plant-based versus vegan. Okay, vegan has a negative connotation because it means you don't use leather and you don't use honey. We're totally plant-based. It's the word that I, the words that we like to use. Um, okay, dessert, always, desserts are always a winner. Okay, especially if it's healthy and very tasty. People know that sugary processed desserts are not healthy and probably one of the major causes of their health, of their bad health, right? No one is gonna ever return, you know, say no to a healthy dessert. And they're probably gonna wanna go home and make it because people love sugary stuff, but they know that it's not the greatest. But if there's a dessert that's healthy and there's no guilt, they're gonna wanna make it, they're gonna wanna enjoy it, okay? Um, when a, let's see, when a dessert is healthy, people feel they can satisfy their sweet tooth with no regrets. Remember, even good things can be overdone and still cause bad health. Temperance, balance is the key word, right? So we tell, we share with them that you can enjoy these desserts, but always keep a balance, you know, because we can always overdo something that's good, right? And we'll fill ourselves to the point where we're just like, ugh. I overdid it, right? I ate too much, like we do on Sabbath potlucks, right? <laughs> uh, this is a, um, this, in this picture, this is, a, okay, I had a different picture and I forgot to change this, but this is a key lime, um, a raw key lime pie. And it's made, believe it or not, with avocados and lime juice, cashews, coconut milk, and um, we garnished it with some kiwi and blueberries. Doesn't that look beautiful? Okay, and when you look at it, you wouldn't know that that's a raw dessert. But I've made this dessert so many times, I have people who request it. I used to sell this at, um, at a farmer's market and it would sell out. It was just that good and people loved it and they, they especially loved that it was healthy, you know, and it wasn't overly sweet. I don't put any sugar, I put maple syrup in it. So it's a wonderful recipe. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to move on a little bit here. Okay, should outreach meals be healthy and totally or partially plant-based? And I mentioned that already. I wanna give you a little encouragement as to why perhaps we should try to move towards the direction of creating more healthier meals, okay? We can invite somebody over to our home and the meal be totally unhealthy, right? And the people will still love you, right? Because you just invited them over to your home and you had a wonderful time. But if you were to be able to make something that was healthy and very tasty, where the person would, see, would, would say, wow, there was no meat in this and this was so yummy, you know, and they were gonna wanna come back to your home, you know, then, you know, you're actually helping them with their health, with, with, you know, good health also affects the mind. It's just in different ways. So I'm gonna show you a video and Barry, help me out in this. I'm not sure, do I click on this and it will show or, or are you gonna pull it up? Okay. Oh, my internet is not, my phone. That was the thing, my phone. I'm gonna move on, if you can get my phone, I needed to connect it, okay? Okay, yeah, if you can show it for me, that would be great. Okay, I'm just gonna, um, as he pulls that up, I'm just gonna keep talking here. Okay, great. And the sound, do I, you're gonna pick it up from there? Can you, you can move it um, a little bit. I'm, I'm, in fact, take off the sound for a moment. I'm just gonna read this and then we'll move on to the next part of it. Is it something in the water, in the food perhaps, what is, what is contributing to the high incidence of longevity being experienced by people in Okinawa, Sardinia, and Loma Linda, California? Join photographer David McLean as he travels the globe to meet a number of cent cent centenarians and discover the simple answers to a complex question. Okay, you can pick up the sound now. My name is David McLean. I travel to three different cultures of longevity, which are Okinawa, Japan, Sardinia, Italy, and 
Loveland in California. So we went and spent time in each of these places and tried to learn about the cultures of longevity and exactly what it is they're doing to live vital and healthy lives well into their hundreds. The first longevity hotspot we traveled to was Sardinia, Italy. So in this region, men are living as long as women, which is just an incredible phenomenon. Science isn't exactly quite sure why, but one of the theories is that it's because the women wear the pants and that men have less stress as a result. But also the Sardinians have a fanatical zeal for the family. And we dropped by one, four generations of one family, and every weekend they shared this giant meal. And this social component of longevity is incredibly important. And at the time, I remember thinking, this is what being alive and having a family is all about. But the cultures of longevity in Sardinia are rapidly disappearing, and the root of them are a move away from traditional natural food in conjunction with a sedentary lifestyle. We spent time with a woman who was almost a hundred and her great granddaughter, and later that day we saw that same great granddaughter eating potato chips, and we wondered, will she live as long as her great grandmother? Okinawa is an archipelago in the far south of Japan and it's home to the longest lived people on earth. And we met numerous people who were into their hundreds, who were leading active and very healthy lifestyles. You know, the nine year olds were biking and fishing eight miles offshore with these old diving techniques on the reef. And we met an amazing woman who was over a hundred, her name was Kamada, and she had been in a moi. Uh, the rough translation is that it's a group of friends who go through life together and help each other. And the energy and vitality that they would get from that, I believe, factored into the longevity equation as well. And the Okinawans have this wonderful word, it's called ikigai, and it ikigai. translates roughly into the reason for which you wake up in the morning. And all of these centenarians had ikigai, and I don't think it's an accident that that's part of the reason that they're living so long. So one of the cornerstones of Okinawan longevity is caloric restriction. Yet, interestingly, they're eating a lot of food. The trick is that the food that they're eating is all low in caloric density. And that food included these beautiful miso soups that were filled with carrots, seaweed, onions, and potatoes. And like the Sardinians, the Okinawans grew most of the food themselves in their gardens. And they would go to the store for very little. But Okinawa is losing its longevity edge. Okinawa has the highest rate of obesity in all of Japan. And it was quite shocking and somewhat disturbing to see this culture of longevity disappearing right before our eyes. By far the most surprising fact that I took away from this story is that Seventh-day Adventists outlive their American counterparts by about 10 years. What are they doing? Quite simply, the Seventh-day Adventists, who largely populate Loma Linda, California, have a religion that reinforces positive, healthy behaviors. For example, if you're a devout Seventh-day Adventist, you are a vegetarian, non-smoker, non-drinker, who takes a Sabbath every Saturday, where for one whole day, you have to just unplug so we met many incredible people there. Uh, the most incredible by far was a woman named Marge Jatan, who had just turned 100 and renewed her driver's license. So we went for a cruise, but before we did that, we had to go through a morning routine where she lifts weights and rides a stationary bike. And interestingly, the Seventh-day Adventists are the only culture of longevity that we visited who are not losing their longevity edge. And I photographed a baptism at this church and I remember thinking, wow, this is the perfect example of how this religion is still growing and carrying forward. I think in America we tend to marginalize old people, kind of put them away in retirement homes. But these amazing people in three different cultures represent the potential to see your great-grandchildren grow up, a potential to be healthy and happy well into your older years. And that to me was the biggest thing I walked away with from this assignment was that, wow, you know, I now have this sense of responsibility and control based on choices that I make. I'd read that genetics only account for about 30% of how long you live. So, you know, the majority of how long you live is up to your lifestyle. It's up to you. Okay. Isn't that a wonderful short presentation? I give it to you. 
Um, that way you can also share it with people when they come to your home and say, you know, why is dietary change? And you say, well, we're part of the Blue Zones. You know, and you can say it proudly, you know, we are a part of Seventh-day Adventists, a part of the Blue Zones. It's not just in Loma Linda, it's in West Virginia. It's in every part of the world where we embrace the Seventh-day Adventist health message. We can be part of that Blue Zone. And it's such a great privilege and, um, you know, something that you can really um, share to, with people and say, this is the reason why I'm making these changes, because I want to live like this. You want to watch a video? It's a short video, eight minutes. And I'll tell you a little bit about the people who live in the eight and the, um, the blue zones and how healthy they are, you know. And so when you're living this lifestyle and they see you, okay, I'm, and I'm just going to say this as an example. Um, I was making food at the farmhouse and a couple of pastors that were there, they, you know, we were just talking with the wives and, and she says, um, so do you have any kids? I said, yes. I said, I have a 14 year old and I also have a 27 year old and a 24 year old. And she says, no. I said, yes. And she says, you started early. I said, yes, I did start early. And she says, but still, <laughs> how old are you? And I said, well, I'm 50 years old. And she was like, 50 years old? You don't look 50, you look 30. I was like, well, I don't think I look, I got white hairs to prove it, you know? But nonetheless, you know, I get that comment so often. And why is that? And I, and I tell them, I said, the reason why I look younger than I am is because I've been living this health message since I was 18. And uh, God has really helped me change my life around and I give them my testimony. So it really opens the world to do that. And I just wanted to show you that video because, you know, this is not from a Seventh-day Adventist. Tomorrow I'm gonna show you a presentation by a Seventh-day Adventist doctor. He's gonna give us a, a little bit more proof as to why this, um, you know, lifestyle that we have and the eating of the foods that are healthy is so important. Okay, so a Seventh-day Adventist, um, as Seventh-day Adventists, we have an advantage and we have a, um, we have a life transforming, I didn't finish that. Uh, as Seventh-day Adventists, we have an advantage. We have a life transforming message is what I wanted to put there. God given diet that opens doors to ministering to others and developing friendships. When doing an outreach meal, it can be what you eat, a good diet, a better diet, or the best diet. Okay, so you could choose which one you want to present. If you really want to help others live longer and be healthier, then you might want to change your lifestyle and the diet to the best diet and share that with others. When they see the radical transformation that has happened in your life and how you lost weight are off your medications, they will want what you have, okay? And uh, I'm going to try and, I, this is something I thought about last night, but Berkeley Springs has had some really good results with people getting off their medications by going on a low-fat, totally plant-based diet within a short period of time. Um, I do that with my clients as well, too, and they, within a, and within a month, they're reversing heart disease and diabetes. Um, my experience without, um, with outreach meals, I gave you some of that, so I'm not really going to go into totally into that, but the top picture over here on the left, we did a woman's appreciation and we served a really healthy vegetarian meal. Okay, it wasn't plant-based, it was vegetarian, it was delicious, but I want you to look at the table set up. If you go onto my Facebook page, you'll see some more pictures that we posted. Um, we did, a, 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 over here we have the cupcakes, a nice tower, okay. This is our supper club, this is our first supper club in May, and we did a beautiful display. Presentation is everything. You can make the most simplest meal but have a beautiful presentation and it will make the people feel like kings and queens. And that's what you, you're, you're targeting, is to make them feel really special. So special that you are willing to put out plates that are beautiful, okay? I just wanna give you a, uh, an example here. These dishes that are here, okay? If you have, a, when you get a chance at the end, I want you to come and I want you to look at these dishes, okay? Um, I really wanted to invite people over to my home, but we were having a little financial dis difficulty, but I, I prayed about it and I said, God, I still want to, but I don't have really nice dishes and so forth. Well, I went to Dollar Tree and I found these. Aren't they beautiful? I mean, I thought they were, I was like, yes, these are beautiful. And this I got at Hobby Lobby. It has like a little um, leaf designed, but I've gotten some um, gold ones as well. If you can pass me the gold ones on the edge there. Uh, these are the gold ones. I got these at Dollar Tree, 
okay? And these make a nice um, um, placemat type of thing there, okay? This is a temptation. I invested in this, well, not, not me. My family invested in me. I asked them for it for a Christmas present and they graciously gave, you know, gave it to me as a Christmas present. <laughs> so this is a temptation. It's a, a, a cookware where the lid also goes in the oven and I thought it was really beautiful and I know it's gonna last a long time. Yes? Oh, they can't see it. Okay. And so you may want to invest in something special. And we're going to put our beans in that. And I'm going to ask William that if, um, actually there's one here, and if you're able to put the beans in that when we're ready to serve it, because I want to serve you like your kings and queens. Okay, and you're special to me. And so I'm going to treat you like I treat people when they come to my home. I want to serve you for my best. Okay? All right. I want to get into the cooking part of it. All right, let's get into the cooking part of it, okay? I'm gonna share with you, I'm Puerto Rican, okay? And there's a special seasoning that we like to put in mostly our stews and our beans, anything that's savory, and it's called Puerto Rican sofrito. And sofrito is just a mixture of vegetables and herbs, and it smells wonderful. So when you came in here, you kind of smelled a little bit of those beans. The beans had that sofrito in it right and so what you do it you know how you take onions and peppers and garlic and you chop them up and then you saute them and then you add either potatoes or your beans or whatever to it well it's kind of the same thing only we blend it okay and that's what i'm going to show you today okay now you have the recipe okay so look for your sofrito recipe and what it has is uh, well, you know what, before I go into that, let me tell you what menu is. I'm kind of rushing through this because I'm seeing the time, okay? So the menu today is chili with corn and with the sofrito um, in it. Um, we also have a piña colada that you're going to actually get to taste, and you have the recipe for that. Um, we have this fluffy, um, fluffy cornbread recipe, which is wonderful. And uh, let's see here, what's the last one here? Because I don't have all my recipes. I, I need a stack of those recipes that we give them all out because I just, I forgot to grab my, my own copy. Do we have more? No. Okay, oh, okay. Okay. I think, okay, this is yours here. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let me just show this real quick. Yeah. So I've given you one of these flyers. This is for our supper club that we do in Spencer, West Virginia. Um, we don't do it at our church. We do it at, a, at, a, at a, an event place. And that's a testimony in itself. And I'll tell you that testimony maybe tomorrow. Um, but if you go onto our Facebook page, you'll see this flyer. And I wanted to give it to you because you can do something like this. I do it on an app called Canva, which makes life easy for me to be able to put flyers together. And we can talk, talk to me afterwards if you're interested and I can tell you a little bit of how I create flyers like this. And then when I post it on Facebook, I can make anything that's on this flyer move and kind of like present itself, you know, which is really fun when people open up the Facebook page, they see that my next presenter is coming up, you know, and it's really fun to do stuff like that. But anyways, I just, this is just for an idea for you. If you want to do any event, you can do something like this, okay? All right, so Puerto, okay, so we have the Puerto Rican sofrito, we have the cornbread, and we have the chili with corn. And those are our three recipes that we have. So let me show you how easy it is to put together this Puerto Rican sofrito. So you'll need two medium Spanish onions, or yellow onions, or sweet onions, okay? Any onion that you have will work. Four Cubanel peppers or one green bell pepper. In, in major city areas, you can find the Cubanel peppers, um, but not, I haven't found it anywhere like in central West Virginia or up this way, so a green bell pepper works, and that's what I use in this recipe. One large red bell pepper, cored, seeded, and roughly chopped, so you chop everything in big chunks. I'm gonna try and talk a little bit louder. Four ripe plum tomatoes, okay, just your regular Roma tomatoes one large bunch of cilantro, eight medium garlic, um, 18 medium cloves of garlic, so basically one whole head of garlic, okay, just one whole clove. You can just peel it and you'll use it for this recipe. Um, eight ajices dulces. Now, 
the picture doesn't justify the color, but they're little tiny peppers and they're all different colors. Like they have shades of green and yellow and orange to them. And they're a sweet type of pepper with a delicate pepper taste, okay? Um, and if you don't have those, you can buy the little small sweet peppers that you get in Walmart in the bag. That will work. Four leaves of culantro. Culantro is a different form of cilantro, and if you can't find culantro, which I have not been able to find unless I go to a major city area, um, you can just add more cilantro. And that's what I did in this recipe. Um, one tablespoon of dry oregano and Himalayan Celtic salt. So basically, you take everything and you chop it up in chunks, okay, big chunks, and you throw everything into your food processor. And if you don't have a food processor, you can use a blender. And I'm gonna just take a knife here. Seeds or no? Um, these don't have really seeds, these small ones. The big ones do, but these didn't. So I guess they're seedless. And I'm gonna put my onions, and onions are chopped big also. And I'm just gonna give it a little whirl real quick just so that way I can get it down because I'm putting so much in here. This is cute, but it's in the way. <laughs> we can take the presentation out. Yeah, I can put the computer over there. Okay, I'm gonna add the rest of my red pepper. So you're gonna see this is all gonna transform into this really beautiful, colorful dish. Now, what do you do with this one when it's all blended up, you're only gonna use a portion of it in your, in your food, as we're gonna see with the chili. So what I do is I make the whole batch and then I freeze it in um, ice cube trays. Or you can put it in Ziploc bags. And then you'll use whatever you need, you know, two cubes, three cubes, whatever you want. Just because I love you so much, I have samples for you of this. So I want you to try it. If, you're, if you do not have a little refrigerator or something like that, let me know and I can freeze it for you and then when you go home, you'll get it, okay? But we have samples of that for you. If you're making your meals here or you know, try to use it for your tofu in the morning or your eggs in the morning or um, bean dish or anything that you're really making, you know? And I have plenty of this. I kind of made a little bit too much, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I gotta put my cilantro in there. Thank you, honey. <laughs> I was leaving it out for him. Because he doesn't like um, cilantro. <laughs> Huh? Does it make it taste like this soap? No. No? no. Uh, <laughs> this is very unique. Cilantro is unique. It makes, yeah. Yeah. It's very good for you. Cilantro is oh, very I good. love it. So while I'm cutting this um, garlic, I just want to talk to you about the pina colada recipe. Now this is a very simple recipe, okay? And we have it here for you to taste. I also have some lemon water that's sweetened with truvia, which is stevia and erythritol, I think is what it is. So this no, is, is anybody who needs to be on low sugar, you can have that. There is some maple syrup in it as well. Um, so this lemon water there that will give you, serve you at the end. But the pina colada, all you do is get all the ingredients and then you just throw it in the blender, blend it up, and then add ice um, to it and it's ready to serve. And I bought a, do you have it? I'm gonna let my husband put this in there. We had to take it out of the jar so that way we could put ice, but you could do it right here. You could put it right here. Okay. 
and he's just going to pour it in there and then he's going to put it in little small cups so that you can all try it. I did put some ice in it, so yeah, so you can just pour it into this thing here. Okay, and then there's one tablespoon of oregano. And we're gonna blend that up one more time. Okay, I think it's getting on, but you get the point. You all have the samples. I'm gonna finish this out later. Um, if anybody wants more of this, I can surely give you some of this, okay? Because I have plenty of this. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out of here and go to my chili. And we could take this tray away as well. We'll keep this cup here. Okay. So let's go to our chili recipe, chili with corn. Okay, and I need that tray. So in this recipe, we have a half a cup of sofrito, which is what I did here. Or you could do a half a cup of diced onion, half a cup of green or red pepper, which is optional. One to two cloves fresh garlic, crushed, or a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. The more fresh the vegetables are, the better your dish is gonna taste. One teaspoon of cumin, one and a half teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, a teaspoon of salt, two cups of black beans or small red beans. In this recipe, I use the red beans. Um, a half, a one cup of ground beef or ground turkey or ground meat alternative. And I use the Morning Star meat alternative into this chili. Um, one and a half cups of frozen or fresh corn. Um, I use frozen corn. 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes in juice. Two tablespoons of molasses and one tablespoon of maple syrup or honey. Or you can lose, use a low glycemic sweetener. So if you have somebody again that's like a diabetic or watching their sugar intake, you can use whatever sweetener you like in this recipe. Okay, so which is really nice. Okay. When you want to minister to people, you want to sacrifice for them and you make a dish that you know they can eat and enjoy. Okay, I have a skillet here that I'm going to um, make this recipe with and this is piping hot. Here's the cups for that. And can I have the sofrito in the chopper? Okay, and this is hot already, so I'm just gonna, and you know what, I did not add, I did not get my water for this, but you know what, I think. Um, you brought that? Okay, that's not my water. <laughs> yeah, I do need water, I didn't think of it, but if you can get one of those glass and just get water from inside there. Oh, they have those little cups too, right? Okay, so basically you saute this in water. Okay, this is a low fat, actually this is a no, well, there is fat in it, but not refined oils, okay? And you saute this in water. And when you taste the chili beans, you're gonna realize how great it tastes and it doesn't have any oil. As much as possible, you wanna minimize oils. Tomorrow, we're gonna to have Dr. Emerson, he's gonna come on and he's gonna do a short presentation on why low, um, no oils in your food is actually healthier for you. He's gonna give you the science behind that. Um, if you come to a wellness camp, he does a whole presentation on that that is totally wonderful. Okay, so I invite you to um, come to wellness camp, sign up. I, I'm not sure if this is gonna, I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the next few years with supper club, I mean not supper club, with wellness camp. I encourage you to come to this one. 
okay? So that way, um, the presentations are wonderful. People start reversing their heart disease and their diabetes by coming. People start losing weight. And we give a lot of great information. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, so the next thing that you want to add, okay, is, um, so you simmer until the onions are tender, and then you add the rest of the ingredients. So I normally like to add my tomatoes. So I'm gonna add a whole can of tomatoes. And, oh, this was nice if we go there, okay. And this is my chili powder. I'll add all my seasonings to it. Add my salt. And I think this was onion powder. Okay. And I'm gonna let that saute. Okay. It smells good. <laughs> you have to sit up closer if you really want to smell it. <laughs> okay. And so this sautés, and then once this sautés a little bit, um, I like to add my veggie ground. And you don't have to do the veggie ground. When I did supper club, I was totally blown away. I had a pot of chili with vegetarian meat and a pot without the vegetarian meat. More people at Venice and non at Venice wanted the pot without the veggie meat in it. Beats without it. And then and all the kids, all the young all the young people and all the men, they went for the one with the with the veggie meat. <laughs> they looked at me like with two like I had two horns of like, of course, like the veggie meat, yeah, sure. And I was like, you don't realize just a whole bunch of people just went through without not wanting the, the chill you know, the veggie meat. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with it, but I just think people want less processed, less processed foods in their diet, okay? And then, okay, so now you add your beans. You could do black beans or red beans. Either one works. In our supper club, we did the black beans. It was just as delicious. And I'm gonna put some oregano. And molasses. Gives it a nice little sweet taste to it. and your maple syrup, okay. So I don't think I finished saying about the pina colada. You just throw everything in the blender. I think I may have, maybe I did finish it, but you throw everything in the blender and you have an, a quick, delicious drink that they can have with a Mexican meal. Okay, so after this sautés for a little bit and starts to bubble, that's when you throw in your corn. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw the corn on here. And it looks beautiful with the yellow. You have the reds, you have the browns going. I don't know if I can, I can't really show this. But when you come up, you'll see it in the beans. And we're gonna serve that to you. You're gonna get a chance to taste this. And I'm just gonna let this cook. And by the time I'm done serving the beans to the, you know, down the line, this will be ready. Okay. All right, so that is our chili beans and our sofrito, and you can serve this with, with mashed potatoes. It's really good. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm gonna let you taste tomorrow uh, mashed potatoes with this um, simple mayo recipe that comes from, our, from this cookbook that we're, did, you, did I put it over there? Oh, it's under your thing. Okay. I want to introduce to you this cookbook, it's Seven Secrets, okay? And this is the cookbook we're using for our supper club. I use this cookbook quite a bit. I use a lot of the recipes because there's no oils. The fats that, um, that they use in this recipe come from your nuts. Um, vegetables and grains all have oils. Very minimal, very minimal amounts, but in a way that our bodies can use it. Um, and uh, the only oil I tend to use in my diet is in my salad dressing and that's not all the time. And they have some really good salad dressings here. And so tomorrow I'm gonna to show you their simple mayo recipe, which can actually be used as a, um, a chipotle dressing. You can also make a ranch dressing with it, and you're gonna to get to taste that this week. Um, you can also take that um, simple mayo recipe, remove the onion powder and the salt, and add honey or maple syrup to it, and you can actually make a whipped cream with it. So it's very versatile, it's very delicious. You're gonna try, get to try it this week. So 
I want feedback as to what you think, okay? But this, I don't like to recommend something that I've never tried or I don't really like. I like this cookbook a lot, okay? You can get it from your ABC. Um, you can, con um, I mentioned it to them. I thought they were going to have it. Um, so he's gonna see if maybe by the end of the week he can get them, okay? I do have a few copies um, I brought with me, so if you really want this cookbook, okay, let me know. I just, have to con I just have to find out from the ABC how much they're selling theirs for, okay? And so then I can, let, I can sell you the cookbook. All right, well, that's, that's our last recipe. Um, let's see, the recipes you have here, okay, so you can, you can serve the chili with mashed potatoes, with rice or as haystacks. Okay, you can make a burrito. So this is why I tell my um, um, people that come to our events or come to my home, I say make the chili beans, make a big pot of it, and then you can have it rice and beans one day, the next day have a burrito, the following day have, have haystacks, then the next day have it with mashed potatoes. And out of that one bean recipe, you got four different menus. Isn't that great, right? Yeah, baked potatoes, you can put it right on top, of, or sweet potatoes. We did that one time in our supper club. We ha they put it right on top of their sweet potato and then the chipotle dressing on top with some um, picadillo, tomato picadillo. You have the recipe for that, okay? And most of these recipes, the chili with corn, I tweaked it a little bit, but it's in the seven secrets. The fluffy brown rice is in there. Lemon balls, you're gonna get to try that tomorrow. This is a fantastic, easy, super easy recipe and super delicious. The pina colada is our recipe, so we're giving that to you. So the sofrito is my recipe. The tomato picadillo is in the seven secrets. The cornbread, which you're gonna to taste today, is also in the seven secrets cookbook. And the cashew cheese sauce is one that is my recipe. They have a really good one in the cookbook, but today the cashews are getting so expensive that I had to tweak my recipe. And what I did was I took out the oil and I added coconut milk to it and it took it to the next level. It is fantastic with coconut milk. If you've ever made cashew cheese sauce, try it with coconut milk instead of the oil and it is delicious, okay? So, but that is coming up in the following days. You don't have that today, okay? All righty, so here you go. Those are your recipes, okay? And let's pray. Um, we're gonna let you go and we're gonna put the chili beans into our dish here and our cornbread is where it's cut, it's cut up already okay so we're gonna put our chili beans in here and if you have some more cups we anybody that wants some of this lemon water you'll be able to have some of that yes very good thank you William that's why we need partners right um, so we have one gluten free which is this one cornbread for you to taste, and then this one is with wheat flour, okay? All right, well then why don't you pray so that they can have this and we'll let you go with the samples. Right, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the healthy choices that you give us. We thank you for your love and your mercy. We ask that you bless this food as we try it, and we thank you for those that have come in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay.